Haunted Holler painting hosted by Troll Lord Games. And I am your wonderful host today, Daniel from Haunted Holler Painting. And today we are going to be painting some models and talking about a few projects that I'm currently working on. Let's make sure the stream updates here because I'm still showing that they're watching Blue Box RPG. Oh, here we go. Here we go. There it is. I'm, I'm there. I'm good. Makes me happy. All right, I'm by myself for right now. Uh, Dale's supposed to be jumping in here a little bit earlier. Um, we are moving to a new day. Tuesdays. Uh, reason for that is because I've had some life events that have gotten in the way of some stuff. And they're more important than this show. And uh, it's cool. I'm cool. We're all good. Everybody's good. I love you all. So it's cool. So don't worry about that. Um, so, uh, tonight I did want to share some, uh, a few little projects with you guys I've been working on. Uh, first of all, y'all probably noticed this right here. So, my kid had these blocks, um, they're like, you know, like buildings and cars and stuff like that, and it's like a Melissa and Doug thing, and it came in this really cool case. So, I developed this handy dandy work area that's fairly small it's a little bit over a foot wide i can get my arms in here comfortably uh to paint models okay so i'm working on this now so this is ultimately going to be a very portable system that i'm working on so should be good to go on that what i'm planning on doing with this is some of you all know i have a light system of arches that go above my desk I believe I, what I'm going to do is actually move the arches to just over this area here and clear my desk of anything non-painting uh, related and keep it all stored because I'm trying to bring a little bit of order to my life um, for a lot of reasons. Um, one, I don't have a lot of order in my life. Two, I have found out that I have adult ADHD, which makes things a lot worse. So, you know how kids with ADHD are thinking about an adult with a lot more money to buy a lot more junk is compared to kids with ADHD. So, uh, but yeah, anyway. Uh, I was kind of wanting Dale to hop in here for a minute uh, before we start talking about some of the cool things I've been working on. Now, I will tell you, guys, this last few weeks have been crazy for me. I haven't even shipped out the, the paint set to the winter yet. I plan on that this week it will get shipped out it's just been one of those 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 periods of my life uh we all get those um so enough said hey it's dale good day good day good day hey, how are y'all doing just talking about some of the crazy stuff going on in my life right now um one of the reasons you know i had some life issues that have got me to where I have to move the paint show to Tuesday nights instead of Thursday nights, which is cool with uh, Troll Lords because I don't have nothing going on this time period. But, um, but yeah, like lots of crazy stuff going on. Like, I just found out that I have adult ADHD. Like, they, I finally got diagnosed. So, like, they put me on medicine for that. Um, nothing crazy yet. It's just uh, uh, this medicine that's non-stimulant, but it's been really weird for the past few days I've been on it. I can't sleep, so... Yeah, well, it's yeah that's a drag. But anyway, and I was talking about how I started working on my mobile my mobile paint area right here. So, um, and, and, and I was going to talk a little bit about a couple of the projects that I've been working on uh, because of this. So, like, um, if you notice up here, I've got, like, a little paint rack going on. But if you notice this material, this is actually sprue material that I'd cut models out of and actually built the frame for the paint rack out of that and then put wood on top of it. So I got really bored. This is how an ADHD mind works is we, we follow the dopamine, as we say. So I, I started building stuff out of these, these sprues because I had so much sprue material laying around. Like I built this brush rack. I, got, I, got, I was going to build a brush rack and then I built this little holder here that holds... Uh, holds um dang citadel paints that um so they won't flip over wait it's kind of cool hold on yeah no well, it's all very cool yeah so but that's got me back into modeling some stuff for 3d printing 
So this guy um, on Thingiverse actually reached out to me because he saw one of my models on Thingiverse for a paint rack. And so this paint rack was these hexagonal things that were just built like a big shelf that you could just slide your paints into and it takes up a very small footprint on your desk. It looks right. really good. And he's like, man, this is awesome. I'm going to give you a tip and I'm going to start printing, on, printing this out. So he sent me like 10 bucks and I was like, cool. And I was like, cool. I was like, the way my brain works is that it doesn't, um, uh, I don't think of stuff to do in 3D until I have a problem that I need to solve and I can do it in 3D. And I was like, do you have anything that you want? And he said, yeah, I want a brush rack that holds my brushes vertically. So that came this little prototype little thing right here. Um, and then, then like, you know, the brushes, I've been looking at that. Yeah. So it just slides in right here like that. So, and the reason we do this is so the brush bristles dry in a downward position. And they don't open up like that, you know? So this was the prototype and this is the completed version that I didn't have sprue material glued to the top of it to make sure they didn't fall over. And I actually glued this already to my, my little workstation so I don't knock it over so you can see it right there so I'm trying to get where if I didn't want painting stuff out like I'm I'm, I'm looking at taking even my, my lights that are above my desk and attaching them to this little painting tray that I've got going on here so like and then I want to move some lights over to, to the airbrush area and hook a camera up there so when I'm airbrushing people can see what I'm doing there so, but well, you're I, all full of plans, aren't you? Yeah, because I'm trying to get bring some organization into my wonderful life and all this other good stuff. But and I was gonna tell you, um, so it's led me to get on board of another project I've been wanting to work on for a while that I had the ideas and dreams of, and my wife actually says that it looks like it would be cool enough to almost patent and produce and sell. So, like one of the problems with hobbyists. Um, is we don't have a lot of room for a lot of paint. You know, you don't have like, like I've got a big rack over here with paint on it. But a lot of guys, you know, only have like 30 something paints or 18 paints or something like that. But they need a place to store it and organize it. And a lot of people want to put them on these tiered shelves that you can buy made out of uh, balsa wood and stuff that have been laser cut. But the problem is though, when you're not painting, it just takes up a very large footprint. So I've been coming up with a way to give a tiered system like that, but when you're not using it, can be easily stored away. And that's where we have this. Okay, so we've got these paints here, right? I'll let it catch up with you. I'm with you. Okay, now watch this, check this out. So like I want it on a tiered system. All I do is Push, I got it. Well, I've got a few more kinks to get out of it, but I just push this stuff down like this, and now I have a tiered system paint rack. That's a nice idea too, because you yeah you'll get enough you get enough variation in paint in one of those. Yeah. But if you use more than one, you can make different. Well, and with the snap apart yeah. thing, you can make different sets of paints. Right. And only take out the color combinations that you need for right. a particular job. It's so like cool when, idea. And when I when I don't need it, it and I'm gonna make these pieces on the top here to where it doesn't slide crazy like when it's in this position here. Cause like if I did it like right here right now, if I held it by the front, this would all fall apart. But um I'm gonna attach other pieces and I'm gonna create feet, but so these actually just slide apart um as it is like this. So, and I'm printing them out in sections like that. The only thing that um, I'd like to figure out if I could get them actually like plastic molded injected. It might not, might be a product worth, you know, trying to figure out if we could do and sell. But like, um, but yeah, I've been, this has been bouncing around in my mind for a while now. So I'm just like, I'm, I'm going to do this. So one of these little pieces though takes me uh, six, almost six hours to print. So, and I, I think it's cool because you can fold it up and then just drop it in a drawer somewhere when you don't use it. And then when you need it, just pop it back out. So I'm all about like trying to put stuff in drawers and things like that. So but that's what I've been working on, Dale. What have you been working on? Retiring? Your retirement? 
Uh, you're a funny guy, and I'll take that in the spirit it was meant. Yeah. Uh, um, no, actually, um, two days ago, Sunday, the weather was brilliant out here. Oh. It was like, you know, 72 degrees or so. It was like, you know, one of those weird spring days where suddenly spring goes, wow, I'm going to bust out today. Yeah. So I tromped around the backyard for a few hours, during which I actually had my shirt off. It was so hot. But it was nice to uh, get the vitamin D and feel the warmth of the sun on my back. But yeah, I spent most of Sunday um, trimming apple trees. Oh, wow. I've got four ancient, poorly kept by previous owner apple trees uh, that uh, need a lot of remediation. So over the years, I've been trimming them up and trying to figure out which parts of them are actually growing and which part is dead wood. So I got... Uh, Oh, I'd say four or five big piles of dead wood out of out of four trees. So that will help get some more air and some more light into the actual producing parts of the trees. Yeah. I mean, they're they're not fancy apples. I have no idea what variety they are. They're not good looking, but they're great if you want to press for juice or if you just want to peel and cut them up and put them in pies or make applesauce. They're awesome. Just you know, but they're nothing special. To me, apples are for eating, not looking. So, yeah, I don't, exactly. I don't care what they look like as long as they taste good. So, yeah, like a, um, two of the trees produce a really big apple, like a fist, a big fist-sized apple mm -hmm. um, that's kind of yellowy, rosy in color. But where the stem comes out, it looks really dark and scaly. And it looks, you know, at first look, you're going, oh, God, it's rotting on the tree. But it's not. It just gets scaly. So, like, with a couple of flicks of your paring knife, you chew that off to your compost bucket and you have these beautiful sweet juicy apples that are really quite tasty i really um, like them well we started planting down here about a week ago and then what we have what we call i don't know if you call it up there we call it dogwood winter down here so it hit like 30s but all i planted was um cabbage and broccoli and then like in two more weeks we'll be planting um all our lot stuff for the summer so yeah, and in that respect, I'll be about another two to three weeks behind you. But I can um, start doing cabbage and stuff like that. But my problem is um, I've got three more uh, beds to put together. I use raised beds. Yeah. So um, that's why I'm hoping for a few more degree days so I can start uh, getting those. I'm only going to make three this year for a total of four, mm -hmm. and that should be enough. And then uh, hopefully from two years ago, uh, when a tropical storm came through here and blew over a couple of my trees, I'm still cleaning up after that, and I hope to get that wrapped up this summer. So that'll be on the, on the skids for projects to keep uh, old Uncle Dale busy during the afternoon this summer, you know. I'm finally trying to get my second edition game started, too. Oh. I'm sorry, trying to get your what in? The what? Sec second edition Dungeons & Dragons game going. Mm. All right, and how's that going? Well, I'm, I'm still rounding players up. It's going to be on Sunday evenings if you know anybody in Canada that wants to play. Mm. I know someone in Canada who plays every second Sunday afternoon ah. already, and one of his players wants to uh, start up a little campaign, which will probably go alternate Sundays from that game. So. That makes me sad. You Don't know, be I'm, sad, man. I'm, May have been throwing some spell jammer in it. You never know. Well, that would have been fun to play because I never have before. But mm -hmm. uh, you know, All right. anything's possible in the future. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Sorry, I got candy in my mouth. Well, so, that's all right. Well, let me let me just ask you the the big question of the evening. Then is uh, what have you got up for us tonight, sir? Well, I went into my box of Shane, reached in randomly, and pulled this guy out. He looks like an ogre from Reaper. And we're going to knock, knock him up real quick. I've got a lot of these ogres, but... You That's a poor have... choice of words. What? Knock him up? That's the only way to... You're going to knock up an ogre. I mean, it's just... Man, there goes a family rating right there. Yeah, I know. So, the first thing we do is we pull him out of the plastic. He's in two pieces. Um, you know, he just fits together like this. Look at him. He's so pretty. He's so pretty. Anyway, uh, so what we're going to do is clean up the mold lines real quick. Uh, I'm going to do that with my Zacto. He's so pretty for a lumpy, lopsided-looking guy, yeah, isn't he? <laughs> we're going to do this from start to finish. 
see if I can pull this off with no primer on him and all that other wonderful jazz. So just asking for all kinds of trouble. Yeah. Give her. So let's see here. We're gonna see what we can do tonight. Uh, yeah. You're a little out of the overhead camera there, yeah, dude. Yeah, I moved it back in. I just saw that. All right. Um, just so can't see what you're doing. Is all. It's okay. Um, the uh, we've had a crazy day today. Our our youngest, I get him ready in the morning for school. Or not really school for he he just stays at a friend's house and she she uh, homeschools her kids, so she actually does a, a reading program with him. And he's only four, though. And so he's learned his ABCs and all that other stuff. And um, he's just started screaming this morning. And, like, grabbing... I thought he was grabbing his ear. You know, so I thought he had an ear infection. But, like, the... Or earache. Because I've never heard him scream like that in pain before. But it got me worried. So we ended up taking him to the doctor today. Turns out he was actually grabbing his neck. He had a muscle spasm in his neck. And I've never known a little kid to get a muscle spasm like that before. So what the doctor have to say about him? To say, massage it, put some heat on it, and keep giving him ibuprofen. He said if it was an adult, we'd give him a muscle relaxer, but we don't have muscle relaxers for kids his age. Okay. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> like, right. Hey, buddy, here's your first wild experience. Well, my grandmother would have been like, give him a shot of whiskey. That'll relax him. Yeah. I came from a family like that. Yeah, that's what my cough syrup was growing up. Was I was just going to say the other trick was always uh, um, Benadryl cough syrup. I think the stuff with the actual yeah. pharmacy grade code uh, cocaine in it, codeine. We used um, it was uh, whiskey with um, honey and uh, lemon lemon juice. So that sounds pretty tasty, actually. Yeah, any day of the week. And people wonder why I drink today. Um, no, we know you're a freak, and that's why you drink today. I got a wow. cough, Memo. I got a cough. Anyway. All right. So we are going to use super glue on this since it is a Reaper model. So we put a drop there, and we put a drop here, and then we're going to have to hold it together for a minute. Yeah, they tell me. Oh, and I didn't tell you that I lost my arm today, eh? What? Yeah, I had my COVID uh, shot uh, early this morning, and my arm just blew right off of my body. They had to rush me to the hospital for blood loss. I'll tell you, these vaccines are dangerous. Oh, hush. <laughs> well, I will tell you, I didn't have to. <laughs> that is that tongue happened. in cheek for anyone listening. I don't know if you, if I told you about. Well, you, you got. I think I sent you a message that my grandfather passed away. Yes, yeah. Yeah. So me and him weren't on the best of terms, so it's it's okay. It happens. Um, and and like it, it was just one of those things where like, yeah, I was the black sheep of the family because I was born out of wedlock. So like they, he 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 didn't like me, and so like I mean he wouldn't even let my grandmother visit my kids on Christmas. That's how bad it was. So. It's okay. Well, all, all, all I can say, except, you know, obviously a loss for your grandmother, too, is it's his loss, you know? Yeah, by I, know. Sounds right. I don't know. I mean, he did, like, we did have a, a, a okay relationship for a while there when my dad was still alive. But, like, as soon as dad died, it's like he didn't even care about me anymore. So, it's like, okay, cool. You're lost, bro. So, all right. Let's see here. We're going to figure out how we're going to prime this guy. So let's see here. Hold on, you said you weren't going to prime him. Well, I mean, I'm I, I've not started out with primer. Normally, we start the show, and he's already primed. So, well, I'm glad we cleared that up because so, I was expecting direct paint application beginning five seconds ago. Well, we are going to get some direct paint application here in just a second. Okay, we're going to try this out. We're going to see how this works. This, excuse me, I've been testing out those. Testers craft paints, right? You know, those wonderful testers craft paints that I had baked in me. Uh, they were really fun. They, they did. It. Were you on for that show? Um, uh, I think that may have been one that I missed. I'm not okay. sure. So, 
These are... I do remember you mentioning the testers before, so, but I, so testers that was uh, a little while ago. A hobby grade acrylic, right? And they're like four dollars for like an ounce. So they've got these two two ounce guys right here, and these tester craft paints, and you could buy at Menards up north of where I live this huge honking set for twenty dollars. That looks like a pretty sizable bottle right yeah, there, yeah. It's uh it's thirty six colors, right? And what? Thirty six bottles. Really? Yeah. For twenty all, bucks. Here's all the colors. Yeah. Right? See that? Is that not cool? And I Oh have, my goodness, that is a ton of stuff. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I've been like leaning heavily on these paints for the last few days now and uh Okay, so the question is, are they any good? I mean, they obviously have some really nice colors, but are they any good? Uh, yeah. So they're no good is what you're saying. No, I'm saying they are. Yeah, that's what I said. So they're no good. Yeah. So well, excellent. Saying, excellent. So we're going to see if we can direct to application on a Reaper's Bone and give us a primer coat on a model with paint from them and if if they can do this uh they're getting ready to be moved up another tier in my these are awesome paints to have so you're brushing on uh primer yeah. in that respect yes then. sir okay. this is what we call brushing i don't think i've seen you do this before even though the bits that you have primed on there yeah so this is just a something that um they a lot of companies make a brush on primer um, which, you know, for certain things like Space Marines and stuff, I wouldn't use a brush on primer because of the fact that I'm trying to get a smooth, uh, texture, but for fantasy stuff, you can use a brush on primer, especially if, if you live in a place where you, you, you can't shoot a rattle can or you don't have an airbrush or nothing like that. So this is always good. So I'm using a color called Desert Sand, which, uh, of course is a sand color. It can also be used as a parchment. Um, a variant of a bone color. Um, I do have a color called French Vanilla in here that is a bone color as well. Um, it works really well. This could actually be used as a flesh tone. It's a very pale flesh tone. So like right now, I could literally just take a flesh wash after he dries and put it all over him and be like, boom, look, he's got flesh. But the I'm not going to do that, so... But look how... No, oh, that's actually a pretty nice color. But check this out. Describe. It's actually going on. It's not pulling up like regular paint does on our bones. I mean, there's a few spots like... Okay, so I... My thing with miniatures is I don't like washing them before I prime them. So if I can put paint or primer directly on something and it works... That now, is, do you mean washing as in rub-a-dub-dub -dub and yeah, we'll give like these so, dishes a scrub? So you're supposed to take, um, on these uh, Reaper minis, you're supposed to take and, as soon as you get them out of the package, get some wash water with some detergent and wash them in the detergent. And uh, to remove any release agents from the molds, right? I was just going to ask if that was the case. Here's my thing, though, is that that I shouldn't have to do that. They should do that at the factory. So, um, we know. Should I call the ambulance for you? Oh, hush. You know I'm right. Oh, what's right got to do with anything? I know, I know, I know. So, uh, let's see here. Yeah, he's doing pretty good. Maybe that's why you get them for like a, just a better price, right? Because this is the, supposed to be the highly affordable, highly usable yeah, I guess. line, right? Am I right? Have yeah, I got that right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, you know, there's a certain logic at play that you can't ignore, Daniel. Now, yeah, stop it. Yeah, I know, I know. I, I mean, I'm not saying that it's not. I'm just saying that. Yeah, yeah, I know. It'd be nice if you didn't have to wash them, but I mean, let, let, let's face it. Uh, where the, the, is that because you don't like having to do it, or is that because we're all tired of and obsessively washing everything these days? Well, you know, it's just because I don't think I should have to do it. I'm lazy. 
You gotta remember, though. I was just going to use the L word, which is no one's problem but your own. Well, no, that's not my problem because you you don't remember before I had to change the name of this paint show because I didn't realize somebody else had already had that name. Was we called this show the Lazy Painter, and it was to the whole point was to get a model uh, done and on the table as quickly as possible. So that was before you, you you joined in, and so we found out that somebody else already had it because I was gonna like a, a, on Twitch, and I was gonna be like, man, I'm gonna create a, this this persona out as the lazy painter. Chuck loved it. Oh, he thought it was great, and then we found out that somebody else had it, and then I'm like, great day. And so I came up with haunted holler painting because I do like spooky stuff, and Chuck's like, I hate it. It's the worst thing ever. So. Well, what was Chuck's big, fat, wonderful uh, suggestion? Yeah, or did he have one? He just says we. Well, could, there you go. We could keep going with the lazy painter, and I was like, "Well, this problem is that we couldn't copyright nothing or do anything like that, and somebody else already had that name and stuff." So it's all about branding. Yeah. yeah. Well, that goes so far, I think. Yeah. Keep in mind, you're still a hobbyist at this, right? Oh, the people know. who are interested are hobbyists. I know. It is what it is. It is what it is. Yep. It's life, and life as we know it. Yep. So we get this uh, primer coat on, a.k.a. the first layer of paint. See, that's what primer... People think primer is some super-duper magical elixir that primer is a paint that has a special chemical in it that forces it to bond to the material okay so like and what i mean by that is it has it has a etching material in it and so it etches the surface of whatever you spray it on and so like if it's a plastic primer designed for plastics it'll etch the outside layer of the plastic and bond itself better to the plastic. But um, you shouldn't really have to, you know, most paints, like like when I did rattle can paints, I never bought primer. I bought the cheapest paint I could get at Walmart that was flat. I either got their flat white or their flat black, and they were 99 cent a can. And that's what I used for the longest time. They're really hard to get a hold of right now because I guess – with everything being COVID, you know, it's just one of those things you can't get right now. Like, I can't get rubber gloves at a reasonable rate for airbrushing to put on my hands because they're you used to be able to get a, the really good ones for get like 50 gloves for like 10 bucks, and now it's like 50 gloves is like $30. So I'm just like, I'll just get paint on my hands. Now, there was something you said early on and in in that little bit there that has got me a little concerned where you were saying that uh, primer is not a magic elixir because yeah. i have to tell you i've been drinking um a little vial of primer every day now for years and i feel great so i think it is kind of an elixir hey wait now your primer and paint primer are different types of primer now so your primer probably is illegal though where i'm <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, there's always that. Yeah. So, hey, look, what I'll do is take this brush and I will drop it in here because I don't need it any longer. And it was, it, it sought its purpose. Now it's in its rack. So, it's worth that. So, now we're going to let this dry for a minute. So, with this being craft paint, it should dry fairly quick. Now, what I noticed about this paint, and you could actually see it here because I, you know, instead of using a dry palette, I've been using the top of my wet palette for a dry palette stuff. So, so you probably can't tell, but that's really flat. And that's what you really want in a model paint is something to be flat like that. Not a semi-gloss, but flat. So if you look at this paint here, and it's kind of semi-gloss almost. Uh, it's well, it's because it's partly wet still, well, too, no, right? No, I'm talking about this little bit of black right here. So this little bit of black right here is a hobby paint, okay? And that's a, a Citadel color called a Baden Black. But it, it's got a sheen to it. Like, this doesn't have a sheen to it, which is good. That's what you're looking for. There's a company that specializes in the fact that their product doesn't have that sheen, and they're called Scale 75. 
and so like um, everybody's like, well, I want my paints to be, you know, as matte as possible. And scale seventy five is kind of like the one that set the bar up there. <clears throat> so that's another thing that I found out about these craft paints that they're just really good. Now, uh, because because of that, so what I had a theory, and somebody else had mentioned this theory about these paints, is that we believe testers only makes one group of acrylic paints and they just put them in everything well that may be the case because testers is like you know the model paint of choice from when i was a kid well they're owned by rust oleum now too so i noticed that when you were um holding something up earlier yeah so it's a and, and using my model finesse by the way so i noticed i had gotten some chips of uh knocked out of the hood of my car like little flakes of paint and it was really bothering me so i looked up online about matching that color and it was like twenty dollars just for a little pen to dab on those spots so i went to the hobby shop right. and i knew what color my car was and i matched it up with tester's model paint the enamel because that's all it is is enamel <laughs> paint and i was sitting there with a little little right. glass bottle just dabbing it on the hood of my car and my neighbors were looking at me like, what is he doing? But it matched almost perfectly. It's just a tad bit darker, but it's good. It, it, you can't tell. So, but anyway, yeah, he's drying up right now. So, he, he looks pretty cool. Um, so, we're, <laughs> we're going to use some Smooth move. flesh tone. A lot of flesh tone. So, I've got a barbarian flesh tone that we're going to use, which is a kind of a darker flesh tone. And then we're going to use a leather brown for his belt. Um, and then we're going to have, again, some different shades of leather, um, on him. And then we've got that fur, which I'll probably paint that like, um, I don't know. Let's see what I'm going to paint that. I might paint that a different color. Hmm. Let's see if I can find a werewolf fur around here somewhere. But anyway, but that's what we're going to do. So I'm, what I'm going to do now is. Yeah, I think we've seen you use the barbarian flesh tone on something before. I just can't remember what it was or something. Take way back take the barbarian flesh tone real quick and give it a spin and the spinomatic so we can loosen it up the spinomatic needs its own camera see you can hear that <laughs> yeah yeah so. yeah you could become the um no never mind i was thinking of an all possible alternative to the lazy painter Oh. Having to do with like having like sixteen cameras on your workspace. Uh, I was watching something that actually kind of reminded me of you the other day. The compound eye painter. Look at da, this. Da, da, da. See that? Doesn't roll off the tongue the same way See, though. That's still wet. This this stuff right here. That's from two weeks ago. <laughs> and it's and is that texture's paint or something else? Uh, well, it's it's not as I mean it's thick but it's like i can't use it but it's still wet from being in the wet palette it's the tester's paint where i painted with it two weeks ago so but um no i started watching something that actually kind of reminded me of you and um uh, it's weird owls mockumentary I don't, I don't know why it reminded me of you because you know oh who knows so, lord loves i'm sober as a judge nothing funny about me <laughs> So you say, so you say. Uh, now I'm going to take this uh, excess paint, that, this tester's excess paint that I had, and, and I'm going to be, I'm going to save it. I'm going to move it over here because I need it. I'm going to use it with my my barbarian flesh right there. So we're going to mix it up a little bit. So we're going to create me a middleman color. If we can. I miss your uh, silicone pie, Matt. Well, it's the in the garage. I just need to get... I'm going to cut it to fit this, I think. Um, it just it got nasty, and I couldn't get that... I, it didn't work as intended. I could, you know, after letting the paint dry on there, it went and flaking off like it's supposed to. So I was just like, this is kind of bust. So Yeah, I kind of figured something like that was up. <sighs> yeah, it's just one of those things. So what we're going to do now is we're coming here... Perfection has yet to be met. I know, you know how I am, I like to try stuff, and that's partly the ADHD in me, so, follow the dopamine. Eventually, you keep that up, I'm going to saw that crutch out from underneath you. Well, I'm, 
as soon as the meds kick in, hopefully I won't have to worry about it anymore. It 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 started. It wasn't a big deal until we started work from home, and it started to affect me. And I just got tired of it. That's why I went to the doctor. Yeah, no, I get it. Yeah. But I like to use it as an excuse now. My wife's like, why I'm you... only kidding. Oh, I know. I'm My wife's kidding. like, why didn't you remember that? I said, well, that's a it's when It's when you, uh, you know, when you learn new things about yourself or whatever, and, yeah. you know, you're exploring the possibilities, you like to talk about it. Oh, yeah. So you never know who's going to have an interesting suggestion or an idea. Yeah. I'm not your man on that front, by the way, but, you know. Oh, yeah, I know. It's all right, man. Don't let me stop you from talking about it. It's okay. I want to see if I can zoom in a little bit closer here. So is this the barbarian flesh that you're applying now? Uh, yeah, just a straight barbarian flesh. So on top of the other. So. Uh... <laughs> oh, that just makes me laugh. This is straight barbarian flesh, unadulterated, straight from the source. Straight barbarian flesh. Now from the tales of Robert Howard. Oh, so you do read Robert Howard. Excellent. I love Conan. I got all the Modiphius stuff for Conan. I just can't find nobody that wants to play it with me. Ah, uh, it's a loathsome game system. What I can know. I say? But I, I really got it for the But the material. background material that Modiphius puts into their stuff is really nice. Yeah. The, so. the adventures are where it's at. Like, you can get in there and start reading the adventures and look at the maps and stuff like that. I'm really excited about the the Kickstarter still that they're working on for the Conan stuff. So for uh, Troll Lords, I'm super stoked about that. So Mickey, I'm painting him. I'm painting him. He's gonna have muscles. That's a actually a really good distance to see what we're for us to see what you're doing, man. Yeah, that's good camera I'm work. Make sure I got zoomed in good. That uh, miniature actually has some really nice detail on it, or a lot of different variation of detail. Yeah, with the muscles. He's got the bracers. He's got the muscles. He's got the uh, the club. Well, I've been trying to. Find um, he's got like the the rug around his waist and stuff. There's a lot of different textures in there. Yeah, I've, I've cool. been trying to do more um, with like muscles because I want to get my. Um, highlighting of muscles down a lot better i've been working at that myself yeah so i gotta scooch you in here a little bit let me move my microphone out of the way so but yeah yep 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 uh so I, i'll tell you a funny story um and it's all about my grandfather. It's so funny. Um, and it, it, more mostly about the funeral. So I have a, a brother that's right underneath me. Um, he was probably about four years younger than me, maybe five. And um, so dad one time made me and him go to his half-brother's funeral. And uh, this is, I was probably in my early 20s. And uh, we're driving down there and... It was like an hour car ride, and Dad's like, yeah, man, my brother Clarence was the worst guy in the world. He'd fight you over a nickel, and he'd steal a shirt off your back, and he'd threaten to kill you, and all this other stuff. And he'd tell us all these exploits with his brother and stuff. And um, so, like, you know, we're sitting out here and hearing the story. So when we get to the funeral, um, you know, we're sitting there at the wake uh, on one of these little couches to the side, not in the main pew areas. And, um, you know, we had heard before the funeral, all the people were talking about him as well. Like, yeah, he's the worst person ever, blah, 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 you know, good riddance, he's out of here. Anyway, so, like, um, we were sitting there, and then the pastor gets up there, it's like, Clarence was such a godly man, he'd give you the shirt off your back. And when he said <laughs> that, when he said that, me and my brother burst out laughing in the middle of the funeral. And our dad, he kicked us a a really quick glance is like, dude, I'm going to kill you guys. And he, he, he wasn't really mad because we got to the car and he laughed all the way home because he knew the stories, you know, and he was there for most of them. Well, uh, as is often the case between the older people and younger people is when the younger people uh, spit something out, the older people have to put on the show that, yeah, you're yeah. not supposed to do that. But they're happy that someone has said it because they all secretly want to say it. They just don't have the cojones for it, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, so we're, you know, 
we were sitting there, and you got to realize my my grandfather was a marine. Okay, he was a douche. He was a dick. The big, I, the best way to put him is he's an asshole. I learned how to be an asshole from him. Okay, this is the guy that whenever my grandmother was watching me and she had to go off to the store or something, he would have to watch me. Which she would say, "What you know? Watch Daniel," and and he would literally put me on a bar stool in the basement while he reloaded ammunition and said, "Don't move, don't touch nothing." And to a four year old kid, that's not fun, you know. To not get to, to, to move around. For a 64 year old kid, that's not friggin' fun yeah. either. <laughs> so, so like, you know. But I know when, what you mean. When the when the pastor got up there at his funeral, it's like, Steve Garland was a. He was a God fearing man, and he would give the shirt. He did the exact same thing. His guy didn't know him at all. And um, I kept my mouth shut, but I wanted to laugh so bad. And then we come out of there, and I looked at my brother. I said, did this remind you? And at the same time, he goes, Clarence's funeral. <laughs> so, <laughs> it was just funny. Yeah, it was just funny. Anyway, so here we're coming in with a little bit of lighter color to go on the tops of this belly here. I wondered if that was a slightly lighter color. It's like yeah. so very slightly lighter, isn't it? That's the now, key. you've mixed that up a little yourself, haven't you? Yeah, it's it's... Yeah, and, and so it, it's still mixing up with this wet stuff, too. I'm trying to work on this while it's still wet. So, um, and this will take a minute for this to dry when I get done because we're we're kind of going on thick today. Um, so, get those transitions in there. And uh, we're, we're doing it a little thick. And we're going to do another layer after that, just hitting the tops of it, and then trying to leave a little bit in the areas that would be dark and recessed. This, this is what I'm trying to work on with my muscle work. So, muscle work. Yeah, I I go to the gym to lift weights, and then I you know. Oh, I'm not staring at you, sir, for any weird reason. I'm just learning how the shadows hit your muscles. <laughs> Thanks for pointing that out. Yeah. It's all uh, very innocent. Yeah. I'm a painter. Yeah. I'm an artist. And you're inspiring me to paint an ogre. So I, I have Yeah, you might not want to mention that part. Yeah, I have been going to the gym with my daughter though. And so I used to be I used to be a really big buff dude. Like I used to lift constantly i was trying to get into bodybuilding and stuff back in the earlier days and i let myself go after i got married and things it's it's how how it is around here you know you get looking good grab the woman and you, you just start eating so um but um yeah i've been teaching her about lifting weights and it's so like first of all when i go to the gym like you got to give your muscles just a few minutes to rest in between sets, long enough for the other person to do their set. So with me and her, we're flipping back and forth. I know what machines to hit. I don't sit around and talk to people other than say, do 10 of these, and I set her weight. So we can get in there and do, like, chest and arms in, like, 30 minutes and just walk out. When you got guys in there going, oh, you know, they're sitting around talking and chit-chatting. It's been about an hour and a half in the gym. And so she told me last night, like, Dad, I don't think we're doing enough in the gym. And I said, <laughs> well, mainly, honey, that's mostly because of the fact that you're you're resetting your weight. I'll set your weight, and you'll you'll move it down, back down to where it was. And it's like I feel, you know, the pump and stuff right now that I'm I'm you know where I've been lifting. I said, and she's, well, I just want to put on some muscle. And I said, well, you don't do that in the gym. She's like, what? I said, yeah, you don't do that in the gym. You do that in the kitchen. And she's like, what are you talking about? And I'm like, yeah, m most of your bot your mass from lifting weights, yeah, it comes from eating. You know, you've got to eat the right proteins and stuff like that. And she's like, well, you all don't buy enough food for us to do that. Lord mercy, at turn me six ways from Sunday, because we do, you know, 
And and so like I buy like because I have to have protein shakes because of my stomach and stuff. But like um, but like you know we 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 keep all sorts of different types of foods in the house, especially protein heavy foods. Because my wife's a big protein eater. She she prefers proteins over sweets and stuff. And and I started naming off all the stuff in the house that she could eat if she wanted to. She just got quiet. And I was like, you know, like today we made pork chops for dinner. Like it, was talking, it was yesterday when I said this. I said, you can go home and eat you another pork chop. Well, I don't want a pork chop. I already had a pork chop. I said, well, that's part of lifting weights, honey. You're not going to be able to, to you know, get where you need to be by not eating what you need to eat. And you've got to eat a lot of protein and stuff. And so I was like, I'll make you a peanut butter shake when I get home. She's like, all right. So I went home. And so she doesn't know my peanut butter. She drunk it, too. So this is how you make a peanut butter protein shake. Cup of milk, two tablespoons of peanut butter, right? That that right there throws you at 15 grams of protein. Throw a banana in there, blend it up. But also add an extra six grams of special protein, a.k.a. a raw egg. <laughs> anyway, I just thought it was funny because talking about muscles and stuff. So, All right, so we're going to let that dry for just a second. Uh, while that dries, we're going to switch over to some leather brown, if I can find it here. I need to go back and get some of this. I'm almost out of leather brown, and I'm almost out of skeleton bone from Army Painter. Is it there? Oh, I'm here. I just um, I have nothing to offer right now. Why? Because of the the slipping a raw egg into my daughter's drink. No, I don't care about the raw egg. You want to kill your daughter? That's your business. <laughs> Raw eggs aren't that bad. <laughs> yeah, you got to be careful though. But uh, granted, in this day and age, um, you know the uh, the the regulations are in place to make it a lot easier yeah. to do that. Well, they said they they're said to a point now where we're almost getting to a point where you could almost eat raw chicken because of the salmonella dealing with salmonella and stuff. So that it's not as bad yeah. As I don't I don't think well, I'd I'm go that far. To. I'm not going to. You I know. think raw chicken is disgusting. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, we, we keep, like, we keep all that stuff in the house. I mean, it's just like. Yeah, but you don't keep it, like, just sitting around on the counter or on a bookshelf. You keep it in no. the freezer and the fridge where it's supposed no, to be, I'm right? About, like, proteins and stuff. Like, I keep candy. Oh, I thought you were talking about raw chicken. No, I had a horrible vision there for a second. No. Oh, my God, he hides it so well on camera. But who knew he had chicken just sitting out on the table behind him? Yeah, no, we, we, we uh, do. Um... Oh, wow. You can actually see the stitching in the bell. I'll have to work on that. Um, you know, we take in, uh, like I, I keep cans of tuna fish, cans of cooked chicken. Uh, we're always eating, I'm a big peanut butter eater. I love peanut butter and stuff like that. So, yeah. I've often joked with my friends. I think I'm mostly made of peanut butter. Yeah. I'll, I'll like for a quick snack, I just go up and get a big old tablespoon and just put a big gob of peanut butter on and walk around like it's a lollipop. It's just, you know, it's a quick protein and a little bit of fat in there. Not a lot of sugar. And stuff so when I eat when I make waffles I usually slap some peanut butter on that instead of a bunch of syrup that's how you say it too it's syrup that's how we say it down here in the Appalachian mountains yeah <laughs> am, I, am I bothering you with my syrup God, no, no, because I have such a superior attitude about <laughs> Americans because I'm Canadian. Yeah. <laughs> I always wondered about that. Oh, listen, uh, you know, um, uh, the Honey Badger, are you familiar with Honey Badger yeah, from the TLG uh, Discord? Yeah. yeah. Honey Badger and I laugh it up privately quite often about, about, um, people's reaction because you see everyone expects canadians to be all apologetic and oh, oh yeah. i'm so yeah. i'm sorry a yeah. and all the rest of that and that's all certainly there they, they don't say it because it's not um but i'm out on a one-man campaign to prove that i'm an example of what most canadians are and that's smug yeah. <laughs> and superior feeling because the americans give us such a great foil i mean you know axe murdering um Child killers could look good against some things that go on down in the States. But, I mean, the thing is, that happens in every country. It's just you guys are really big. 
about and it happens a lot. It. We're we're big about broadcasting well, it. Well, yeah. Well, and I mean, you know, we get that in Canada too. Like our media is the same way. And keep in mind, like I worked as a radio news guy for 12 years. That was my first career. And, uh, you know, it, it, it can be very, very soulless. People get into broadcasting or into journalism because they think they're going to make a better place in the world. And, uh, you know, if they have any wits about them, they very quickly realize that it's got so little to do with making the world a better place and more to do with, making you know, um, making a dollar and being entertaining. Yeah. I have to move over here to get to this. This is a weird position for these bracers. I don't know why I had to adjust myself yeah Yeah, it's it's, all right yeah like my mom it's so funny like you know since biden became president you you probably noticed that if you pay attention to american news there's been a lot more shootings in the news and uh, my mom called me the other day it's like uh, daniel i don't know what's happened since biden's been president there's been a lot more shootings and it's like the world's just getting more violent i said actually no it's not mom what? But there was just shootings over here and shootings over here. and I was like, the shootings have didn't stop under Trump. They just didn't get broadcasted as much as, you know. Well, there was too, too much other unbelievably entertaining stuff going on from the president's office yeah. that, you know, shootings didn't stand a chance against yeah. the kind of nonsense you had to deal with. Yeah, and, and so, like... Um, She's like, I just don't believe it. I said, yeah. And, and I said, the world hasn't really actually gotten any more violent. I mean, we've been killing people for hundreds of years. It's just now that we have the access to... Now I've got to clean up around this bracer. I didn't make a boo-boo. Um, it's just now we have news 24-7 uh, every day. And and we just see it. And we're inundated with it so much now. And and 50 years ago, people were still killing people 50 years ago. It's just the fact that it didn't make the news like it does today. So. It's like, and I'm not trying to say anything about, like, you know, it's making a case for gun violence or nothing like that. I, I still think no, 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 no. That's, that's, that's not the point at all. Yeah, I still think it's horrible. And, and I've told my friends in the past, I mean, I love my guns. I love hunting. Uh, I do own guns for self-defense, uh, you know, stuff like that. One of my hobbies is building AR-15s. And um, and so, like, the um, if, if I could be guaranteed that I would have a safe world and my family would be protected, I, I would give up my guns. You know what I mean? Move to Canada. Well, I heard it's just as bad. Well, it, it the, the fact is is that it isn't because we don't have as many guns. That's just pure statistics. In in again, in terms of, I'm not saying that we're any better, but statistically, we do have less gun violence. Yeah. But I mean, you know, it, 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 that's not a solution, and, and that's not a reasonable thing for anyone to ask of another person. Anyway, I'm convinced that there are lots of places in your country where that where the atmosphere is the same. Yeah, they, right? they are. I mean, like, you know? I'm not scared of guns. Like I lived in I lived in Toronto for two and a half years when I was a young man. I worked yeah. in Toronto for a while and that's uh, Canada's biggest city. Um, and that's where most of the gun violence in, in our country is. But again, it's in a great big, huge city. And I mean, you know, uh, even though you have a far greater population, there's still parts of the country where you could settle down, uh, get a decent education, and live uh, quite a quite a good life without uh, feeling the threat of gun violence. And I think that's what makes the gun violence all the more shocking, is because people do know that you know they're living in a really nice place where that doesn't happen until it does well, see, that's and it's such an out of place thing it's so shocking right where we live at now that's that's our life you know it it it's that way here i live I, did you ever watch the andy griffith show god that's like even i was in diapers when it was on tv what are you trying to like suggest mister well, yeah i remember it vaguely in reruns but let's that's pretty much how it is where i live you know well and, then opie what do you need ar-15s for i guess is what i 
ask. Hunting hog. <laughs> what do you need a carbine to hunt an animal for? Yeah, you're hunting them hogs. You got to get them out there. No, I just like shooting them. I like the accessorizing yeah, yeah. of it, you know. It's, yeah, it's, yeah. And that's it. I mean, it's just I don't need one. So I no. mean, but but again, is it yeah. regulated though? Did you have to, uh, you know, provide any sort of documentation of who you were and what your mental state was, or well, was there any the kind of background so, check required? So here in America, owning a gun is a right, not a privilege, like it is in other countries. So therefore, they can't make you provide that information because it's our right. It's like saying you have the right to vote. Therefore, but now here in America, even though we have the right to vote, they're making it harder for people to vote. So you also know, obviously it also gives you the right to freely um, get shot in the face by someone who shouldn't have a gun. Yeah, I bet you because they have a right to have a gun. If we it's ever nutty. Got, if we ever got socialized healthcare in America, okay, if we ever got socialized healthcare in America, I bet you anything they would put a lockdown on guns quicker than anything because like well they might have to because it'd get real expensive, right? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's like, if you look in the UK, they've got this really crazy looking electrical outlets, right? Like, you, you can't even, like, if you if you don't have the bottom plug on, on what you're plugging in, you can't even push the top two in because it moves a little door in the UK. And, and, and they're rated lower than what they could actually do so they don't burn out. So, like, uh, the... Uh, the, but that is actually, they did some analysis of it. That has actually caused people getting electrocuted to go down. Hey, brother, we're getting raided by Blue Box RPG with 52 partakers. Nice. Oh, my gosh. What's, uh, yeah, I guess it's uh, Mystical Unicorn Painting. Hey, Blue Box RPG. How y'all doing? Sorry I took y'all's uh, stream away from Troll Lords there. I don't know if they're actually subscribed to us or if they're being subscribed to, to Blue Box. That's kind of interesting. Well, no, that subscription would be um, that would be for the TLG channel, right? Yeah, but I'm not seeing anybody new in there. Are there any new people in chat? Let's see here. Well, I mean, they just raided with 30 plus people. Let me have a look. No, not really. Okay, so they don't actually show up in users in chat. Yeah. I don't know how that works, brother. It's beyond uh, me. That's weird. Anyway. That's when I should post about the Patreon, but I'm not going to push it. <laughs> hey, it's Ranger Harley. How you doing, Ranger Harley? <laughs> Following. Look, how many... Hey, it's... uh it's late in chat and users. Good evening. Hey, Lord Gazumba. Uh, let's see here. Is he broadcasting tonight? Huh. Oh, well. All right. Let's see here. So, I'm going to take Anita Brown. Brown, brown, brown. Here we go. This is a... Hold on. This is when the color blindness affects me. I have to dig... Ah, oh, this will work. All right, smoke gray. Uh, they're not coming over here to watch me. I see how it is. <laughs> what do you think they're doing? So they come over here to watch the other people's show. I'm going to add some color to this guy. I'm going to give him a little red. Okay, Lord Gazimba, we'll, we'll forgive you. Uh, these are uh, probably a medium body pig, uh, uh, paint as well, so it can be mixed down. But it looks like they use a lot of pigment in it. I will say that. So what we're doing is coming around, and we're going to paint this little cloth here. Uh, 
Who are you trying to quaff, mister? Who, me? You're the one who said quaff. Uh, I said this cloth around his ankle. So, Kazumba's asking what's your go-to brand for mini paints. Oh my gosh, uh, Lord Kazumba, let's see here, it depends. Um, I have a lot of army painter. Uh, I think he likes them all, to be honest with yeah, you. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, it, every paint has its own purpose. Um, tonight we're using some army painter, but I've been playing around with these testers craft paints. Um, you can get a 36 pack of these uh, at Menards for like 20 bucks. And they actually have a higher pigment quality than standard craft paints. Um, we are running the theory that Testers just makes one type of paint for acrylic and bottles it as hobby paint or craft paint. So, but no, I, I'm an army painter guy, um, and I'm becoming a imperial paint guy as well. Um, they've been providing me paints, and I've really fallen in love with their paints. They have a um, their paints are a um, liquid pigment suspended in a acrylic resin that they have designed. So, let's see here. This what uh, Streamlabs will launch out. Just keep dumped, or does it just stall out? Okay. Uh, so, yeah. I, I like Reaper on some things, and some things I don't like them on. Now, I do have some Reaper paints I would not mind getting. Uh, getting more reaper paints, but they're hard to get where I'm at. Um, our hobby shop can't really order them very well, and um, I just end up having to order them on the internet. So I usually end up getting reaper paints whenever I need certain colors, and they only come in reaper paints for that. I really like their liner paints that you can paint in the, the lining panels and stuff like that. They're really cool. So... Uh... Yeah, the scale seventy five. Now I will tell you these. Um, I've been playing around again with these um, um, these testers paints, and they are actually drying as matte as scale seventy five, uh, which is kind of cool. So, and they're fairly high pigmented um, and stuff. So, uh, it's my dream one day to get sponsored by Reaper. I keep making that joke. But I don't think it'll ever happen. You have to keep me up to date with questions because it's stalling out for me. That's fine. And I notice it's stalling out for several people tonight. And it's the whole principle of our paint show is really just a. Uh, I, I, I used to be called the lazy painter. Um, and so it, it's just us to be able to get a model to the, the table as quickly as possible. I, I do do, you know, stuff that you can, um, you know, put up on a shelf and things like that. But for this show, I just wanted to teach people how to get their paint, uh, their models painted into the table. Um, it's one of the reasons I, I teach at Gary Con, uh, the paint class there. And, um, and for that, I am sponsored by Army Painter. They do send me paints for that, so they just don't sponsor me for the show. I teach the Army Painter method when I'm at those shows, so. The method. Yeah. We talk about the method. You know that. I bring it up all the time. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, and, uh, you know, and, and why wouldn't you? It's what you teach. Oh, yeah. It's the method. The rhythm method. Oh, wait. It's the wrong method. <laughs> wrong method. Any method in the storm? Right. Oh, no. Here we go. Right. Now it's all bad. Uh, uh, table ready is good. Competition quality is something I don't want to play with. Yeah, I've got a model over here that is supposed to be going up for auction. I'm actually taking it to Chuck for the trolls to auction off. Um, and they're going to auction it off with some books. And all the money's going to go to the Wounded Warrior Project. Dale's been eyeballing this one for a while. This is one I did. A while I keep back. forgetting about it until you re mention yeah. it. <laughs> so, That's old man brain happening. Yeah. Thanks. 
But yeah, this is the one that's getting ready to be auctioned off. Um, we did that. It's going to the Wounded Warrior Project. Um, and the trolls said they'll give us some uh, uh, a player's handbook and a Monsters and Treasures to go along with it to make the deal even sweeter. So when I see Chuck this weekend, I'm actually packing it up and taking it to him. Um, so he's going to handle all the taking pictures of it and posting the, the auction and stuff like that. So I like stuff like that. I really want to get the adult dragon um, and do the same thing, but the adult red is a little bit too much out of my price range at the moment. So Yeah, neither one of us are made out of money is what it comes down to. Yeah. So. Or I'd definitely just buy it and send it to you to do. Oh, yeah. But then you'd want it to send it back, so... <laughs> No, you told me pretty straight up that I couldn't have the one that, you, <laughs> that uh, you're going to go auction. So, uh, yeah. you know. You'll probably win that auction. I know you. No, I'm sticking my tongue out at you, buddy. That's it's okay. all right, though. Okay. I still like you. You better. All right. So I'm going to take uh, this gray, and I really want to. Uh, wrong brush. It's not my mixing brush. Urgh. Oh, I was showing off uh, some. You think I should show off the stand again? You show off so whatever you doing, want to I've show doing, off. I do a lot of 3D printing, and I've designed a new modular stand system that can be stored like you know in a regular shelf. But whenever you need to go to a tiered system, I'll be posting the files to Thingiverse eventually. But I've been thinking about selling them as well. So and it'll it'll have a piece that goes on the back to be the back part of the stand. So something I'm working on and. I did this. Uh, I, I did a a uh, inverted brush rack as well for somebody on kind of like a commission, but it's the to, so your paint brushes dry pointed down. So I like talking about stuff like that. Okay, so I'm mixing a little bit of this brown with this uh, gray here, uh, and then we're gonna use this somewhat as the color of his fur. So we're just going to get the big areas first with the big brush because it's already loaded with paint. I'm just going to put that there. It's the only thing I don't like about Reaper models is they never worry about the undercarriage. And I'll get the smaller brush out. Don't you be talking about other people's undercarriages now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the small brush and then we'll add some texture to it and some color variations thinking it's kind of like a gray wolf pelt That's something I had to start paying attention to, though, whenever I first got into mini painting, like, oh, it's fur, paint it brown, you know? Um, I started to try to figure out what type of fur stuff would be, like, um, you know, with 40K, I play Space Wolves, so I started looking at what wolf pelts look like before I'd start painting up my models and stuff like that, so... That's an interesting perspective because, you know, when you get up close to a wolf pelt, even though it's a gray wolf or it looks like it's black, when you get up close, they have, like, pretty much all of the colors just in very different proportions. Yeah, space puppies are the best. Um, I'm actually working on a salamander's commission right now, a mystical unicorn painting. So, it's uh, it's going to be kind of trippy looking. Yeah, like, that's the thing about the furs and stuff. I, I, I learned how to do that and... You just gotta make those variations of the colors and things in there. Now, have we seen any of those figures you just mentioned that you're doing on commission? Uh, that's the ones I was working on last week. Um, and it's the yeah, one remember I, I remember, missed last week, right? Yeah, but you remember when I tested the new airbrush? The, those were the ones I was working on as well. So okay.
glad I got actual miniature painters also in our chat with us today. Well, it's nice when you have an audience, right? Yeah, I know. It's good. It's good. 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 We should continue to encourage people to ask questions. Uh, both of us are watching the uh, the chat box. So if Daniel is all into the paint at the time, I'll make sure that any question you might ask will get pointed out so he can answer it. Because I know nothing. I repeat nothing about painting in miniatures. I'm just here for the comedic relief, really. Yeah. He's my and favorite. I know you're all, I know you, you've had a hard time not laughing so hard as I know you're all doing at home tonight. He's, so. he's my Jerry Seinfeld. We, uh, we thank you for turning out. And... See, now I'm, a little bit I'm more crazy. like your Ed McMahon, I think. Oh. And probably about as bright. So I'm adding a little bit of brown to that gray now. The wash will actually fill out a lot of that as well. So, all right, uh, it's nine eleven. All right, let's see here. Oh yeah, I've got to fix a strap. A little bit of strapping around here. Well, it's funny. Remember when I first started uh, hanging out with you on these uh, weekly things? I was. Uh, full of uh, hearing about how washes were like an evil thing that got overused. But now as I watch you paint, I find myself thinking, that's really going to pop once it gets a little bit of wash on it. Yeah. As long as you do it right, washes turn out pretty good. So, Well, as long as as long as long you understand what, what the point of them is, right? And yeah. that was the whole thing is I didn't know. You know, I just heard a thing and I really didn't have any reference point right. for it. We gotta use Mr. Spinomatic. Um, I've played a little bit with contrast paints. Um, I actually did have a commission a while back. A guy wanted me to paint with contrast paints. So he sent me the colors I needed. Like, I'll tell you this, I don't use them as much to get used to them, but they actually behave a lot like the Reaper liner paints. Uh, there's, but they only make six colors in the Reaper liner paints. So, um, and so those behave about the same. Uh, Reaper liner paints are a little bit more pigmented than the contrast paints. I did when I first get them. I got them. I started to work out my own contrast medium as well, and I just ended up buying the Citadel medium and just using ink to them. So if I need custom colors, so I'm gonna use a little bit of oak brown now. We're gonna tie up that uh his club because he's gonna go to the club sorry that was my joke <laughs> i found it kind of yeah I, I mystical i have used them through an airbrush and they go on i personally think they go in better through an airbrush um the uh um, I, I've used, because especially Black Templar, um, it's really pigmented compared to the um, other ones. And so, like, it doesn't go on very well until you, like, shoot it through an airbrush. So. Yeah, I just got me the uh, upgraded from a Chinese airbrush to a Badger 105 Patriot. So, so I'm trying to get as close as I can to his hands here. I hadn't tried the Skill 75 Instant Paints. I hadn't even seen those. Guys, you gotta quit talking about paint. You make me want more paint. My wife's gonna kill me. And that's another thing with washes as well, Dale, is like you, when you can't get up to a certain color. Um, you can you, the wash will actually fill in the gap between the two colors. Here he's got the 
wrapping on there, but I don't think I'll be able to reach it. Should I hit it with this? I didn't hit it with the primer, that's why. Uh. Now, I will tell you guys, I did an experiment tonight with the testers paints. And as I um, have mentioned in the past, um, I always look for paints that will stick to Reaper's bones. Before they are washed, because I don't like washing my models. So, like, I did a test with lazy the, painter. Yeah, he's so, the lazy. So I did a did a test with the 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 testers craft paints. They will apply directly to a Reaper's bones model without primer or washing the model. So, just let y'all know that. Some, uh, fuchsia here. You, should, you should do your own version of uh, Tricks of the Trade. Yeah. Now what I need to do is next time they do Tricks of the Trade, just jump in on the key because I have the stream key. It'd be like, ha ha, I'm taking over your stream. So, see you, the real long shot. Okay, I'm going to use this fuchsia. So long. Fuchsia in his mouth here. Because it'll darken up when I'm... Ah, crap. My tip is going all wonky on me. Okay. Ah, see, look. I got it on his upper lip. That's what happens. I'll fix that. You know me. I can fix anything. Oh, well, maybe. Wow, that's a pinky pink pink. Yeah, it's his mouth, though. Adjust that some. Let's bring it back. I'll be right back. I believe the kettle just boiled. Oh, you people in your kettles. Ah, uh, you kettles and your people. Yep. All right. So while that dries, let's get my makeshift bone color out. Again, I'm using the uh, those wonderful colors from Tester's model uh, craft paints. I don't. I'm so really like them, but they're very heavy bodied. So you got to mix them down a little bit. But the pigment on them's been good enough that as I mix them, they don't really get too bad. So, so, let's see here. It's my dirty water. Oh, that was medium. I just stuck my brush in. Ugh. This one's always been a little thin, so I'll have to do two coats on it. So, what did I miss? Nothing. I just started working on the bones. I don't know. So, what's that color now? It's that French vanilla. Oh, I hear my four year old crying. Mama must well, be that's crying. no fun. Mama must be trying to put him to bed and he's trying to give her the guilt trip, but I hurt. How quickly they learn the weirdest things at such a young age. He got to hang and play on the Switch all night, all day today, and watch TV. So, Mama just sit there napping away on the couch so funny though because after i get off work she's like you need to sit up here with him so i'm that type of dad it's like you can do it just do it you got this you know and like so while she was up there with him he was just literally laying on the couch right 
not doing nothing, holding his neck, and just laying there. And then, like, she comes downstairs to put up laundry, and she comes back downstairs, or upstairs, and I got him in the floor. He's laying there playing the switch, and all in a crazy looking pose. And she's like, is he not in pain? I said, probably. <laughs> but, you know, he's just, he's doing his thing, you know, that's what he does. So, yeah, that's a valuable skill that they need to learn on how to, um, deal with the you know, moderate themselves, right? Yeah. Deal with that pain. All right, let's get some blackout. Actually, no. Yeah. Yes, folks, you'll also get parenting tips from the experienced and the inexperienced with this show. Really, we've got a little bit of everything for everyone. Yep. Oop. Little doll with the paint. I was talking to um, Tyler from Imperial Hobby Paints the other day. How's he doing? He's doing pretty good. His wave two is getting ready to, uh, to be done, so he he's trying to get me to give him a list of of the paints that I want to try out on wave two. And I was like, all of them. <laughs> I don't think he liked that answer. Well, if you're afraid of the answer, you shouldn't be asking the question. But then I'm just a big poop that way, right? Yeah, I know. We all know that you're a big poop. Uh, it looks like when they molded this guy, they didn't get the mold lined up right. Ugh. You can't tell me you're surprised. No, uh, not from Reaper. Not for a bones. Let's get the black I messed up on here. Move that up off the back of his neck here. So, let's see here. Uh, let's try a little bit more of this French vanilla. And I go back over these little skulls again. Figure out what flesh shade I'm gonna use today. So should I do Agrax or not Agrax, but Rockland flesh shade or Army Painter? I'll let you pick. Well, tell me what you're gonna do with the paint. Well, so I know how it's gonna be. Uh, it's the shade. It's the shade for the the skin. Mystic wants to know how long you've been uh, mini painting. That's a good question. I don't think uh, I've even thought of that. Well, I've been painting. So, like, ah, oh, crap. That's a hard question. Um, I started painting when I was sixteen, and I'm forty-two. So, um, a lot of my fantasy stuff is like get it to the table, but when it comes to like forty k stuff, I have to do my due diligence to make it look good. So, the so uh, would you say twenty five years, maybe? Uh, I guess yeah, something like that. So twenty five, twenty, twenty, yeah, twenty five years, give or take. Remember, remember my my first set was the I think second edition forty k box set. And those ugly orcs painting his toenails right now. Uh, I gotta start letting her dry here in a second so I can. So I'm gonna take some of the fuchsia that we had earlier, that stuff that you said that's really pink. And we'll mix it with some flesh tone. Oh, get all sunburnt looking. <laughs> no, you know what I'm doing. It's time for his nipples. <gasps> no, I thought it was his toenails, actually. No. And that nipple nipple action going on there. 
Oh, that's cool. All right. Um, yeah, I love it when people get into painting. This is a hobby I've been doing for so long. Like, I've switched. And so, like, it was so funny. When I first got into miniature painting, I started buying model paints. And so, I don't count the times I built model cars as a kid and painted them as part of my miniature painting. But I started buying model paints. And when I moved out on my own, I realized I couldn't afford model paints. So, I switched to craft paints. And the only reason I ever switched from craft paints to actual hobby paints again because I started airbrushing and that was uh, five, five, six years ago. So how does the airbrushing become important in that equation? I'm not making the connection. Because the uh, craft paints are a lot thicker and less pigmented and it's hard to water them or thin them down enough to shoot through an airbrush. So it doesn't okay. make any difference. So. All right, so what we're gonna do now is we are, we got a little bit of gun metal out. So he's got these metal bands around his, his uh, club here. Club, club, the club, club. Join the club. Okay. The only club where you can join the club, be a part of the club, and get a club. Yeah. Because it's the club emblem of our club. Oh, yeah. Ah, uh, this paint's still a little wet. May have to get at the hair dryer here in a minute. Oh, yep. I should have painted the silver first, then come back and edged it with the brown. Well, I think we'll just have to fire you then. That's it. You're off the channel. I'll take over the okay. painting. Okay. I have a brush and a roller and a paint pan. That's all we need, right? Yeah. That reminds me, we just painted our kitchen last week. Honest, you too, right? Like you, the, you're on like a painting spree. Yeah, well, we're... It's we're, like it started off with the bedroom, didn't it? Then it spread to like the living room or the was, dining room. And it now out. it's like you're painting like the front porch. What is with you two in your painting? It, no, we, we started with the living room, then the dining room, and now we're in the kitchen. I've got to go back and do all the trim work, though. <laughs> and that's a repeatable pattern too it's like the wife does all the painting and then you do all the trim it's like talk uh, about the lazy painter no it's oh we won't need to paint that trim it'll be fine we'll just tape it up <laughs> and then she paints it and she's like that's really dirty compared to this new coat of paint like, yeah. yeah isn't about that what she said with the dining room or the living room too it was the living room but we hadn't uh, went uh, back to the living room yet but I mean, it's true, man. If if you're gonna paint the walls, then it, automatically the trim starts to look like crumb to you, yeah. you know. And you, then you have to paint the trim because it just looks bad otherwise. Yeah. All right. What is the what is the model that proved to be the most challenging for you to paint? Gosh, that's a question right there. That's a good question. Wow, you're like suddenly really quiet and thoughtful about it. Good question, Mystical Unicorn Painting. I think when I first got into commission painting, um, I so I one first undervalued myself as a painter, um, and so like I didn't charge what I was actually worth in the time I was spending on models, but. I want to make the person so happy. I get really frustrated. So I think there's one group company that I paint for. I've mentioned them before. And like the first few times I painted stuff for them. The, actually, the first model I painted for him was a, uh, a, uh, what was that? It was a, it was a bear from, um, guild ball so and um so the bear i painted it like a grizzly and it turns out he wanted it painted like a polar bear <laughs> so i had to go back and repaint it and that was my most frustrating model to paint um i learned a lot i i, I whenever i do commission painting i always try to up my game every time um But yeah, I think, 
I don't really know. It's really hard to hard to think about that. Gosh. So I guess a lot of it depends upon how how you how you measure your challenge, right? Yeah. It's like if okay, if let's talk about the dragon for a minute, okay? So the dragon. Yeah, it's, um, it's good I, start. I'm, I'm getting up for just a second because I've got to get a wash. Um, so I'm gonna go with since you didn't say anything, I'm gonna go with Rockland Flesh Shade and probably Agrax on my browns. Um, but no. Um, let's see here. Um, hey. Huh. Yeah, no, like the uh, the dragon. Let's talk about him. Okay, so when we painted the dragon, um, you remember I got it all the way through that that first time, and I didn't like it, and I stripped it all off. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, that I, was uh, that, a second-run product. Yeah, you know, and I, I challenged myself a lot on that because of the gradient shading of all the scales and stuff like that. So, I mean, like the um, stuff like that, I always try to challenge myself. I... I want to say the first, the hardest model I ever painted was probably the first model I ever painted because I didn't know what I was doing. So what was that model? It was a 40K model. Which was a what? Space Marine. I mean, that's really and truly it. A dang Space Marine. see here it's we got 29 minutes i'm trying to let this dry up some but no yeah like space marines and it was so funny so me and a buddy we split the box set um i think it was the second edition one it's the one that came with the uh orc dreadnought that was cut out of cardboard um i got the orcs he got the the marines so the um so we you know he asked me to paint his his marines for him and i asked him what color he wanted and he said red of course i didn't know how horrible red was to paint with at the time um i had you know i went and got this is back when citadel paints came in hex pots they were made by coat the arms uh coat the arms still makes paints today um you can buy their paints and it, they look just like the original Citadel paints. I really would love a set of Coat Arms paints. I would love them so much. I even reached out to them about sponsoring us for a starter set when I was doing all the starter set stuff, but um, they didn't reach back out with me and stuff, so it was all right. I mean, Vallejo at least responded, but um, the um, but yeah, they were... They weren't great paint to begin with. Um, I know they've changed a little bit now, but the red was a bright fire. It was like that that red I used earlier, but a little bit more yellow in it. Um, that red right there is like a really bright red. And, um, and so, like, we, uh, I got the, those paints, and I, you know, I went, first thing I did was go get a rattle can of primer, and it was white. I didn't know any better. Then I brushed everything else on it, and then he's like, I want a custom logo on the side of it, so I created something for him, because he's really into Camelot and stuff, so I, I did like a golden circle, like symbolizing the round table, then I painted a black sword in the middle of that, symbolizing Excalibur, and then I was learning how to do the the, the chest plates, the all that other stuff on Space Marines and backpacks, and Sounds like uh, fun, actually. So, do you, Mystical, you have a bunch of coat in the arms. Uh, do you like them? I mean, so, uh, wet blending, um, you know, like today. Muscles. Yeah, you know, they, well, that's wet blending for me. That's, um. Uh, part of the night's exercise is making good muscles. Yeah, so, like, doing the three-layer highlights, you know, like, dark, medium, and highlights, so, um. But yeah, I, I will tell you, um, the paint you need to look at is called Imperial Hobby Paints, okay? Um, they're, they're actually a new paint company, and I mine are up on a shelf over here. But um, they're actually kind of expensive, I will say that. They're getting ready to do a price lowering. But you can use, I think, what in the, um, it's either Haunt or Haunted, for Haunted Hauler Painting, um, 
is a coupon code that they have activated. I can't remember um, which one it was. And you should like 20, dig that out. I know I should. It's like 20% off. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'm a bad paint junkie too. So this guy, he works in like the housing paint industry, and he got into model paints. And so, like, he, he developed a... Um, he had the guys that his scientists at the housing paint industry or wherever he worked at develop a acrylic resin for his medium. Okay. And then he used liquid pigments. Okay. So there is no shaking of these bottles that you have to use at all. Okay. Now, and then he did come up with something really cool. He only came out with one metallic and it was a really bright silver. And the way his paints are formulated, you could take, like, say you want a gold, you take orange, his orange paint, and mix it with that silver paint, and it turns it gold. Any one of his paints you can mix with that silver paint, and it will turn it into a metallic. And so, uh, we've been talking a lot, and also, uh, uh, he's kind of working on a wash system like that after I gave him the idea, like, He's going to give you a his wash medium, and you just mix paint with it and go. Because it, because his paints are with a liquid pigment like ink, it works a lot better. So let's see. Is this? If I recall, they uh, they go on with the brush like they apply really nicely. Oh, yeah. um, they don't go on. Um, they look like they're going on really thick, but they're not. It's just that the the pigment is so dense that they that they apply really nice really nicely your first coat always looks pretty good i'll dig that model up here in a minute that we screwed around with um, right let's see here where is that yeah this was if okay. he's getting ready to release new paints maybe another yeah. um another That's show cool. painting using some of his paints so would this be a was good the thing first attempt with his now the one thing that really screwed us up was his his shade i hated his shade and i told him that uh, as you can see, I have a kind of a, a theme going with the stuff I paint on the show. It's always ogres. Um, but, like, I did not like his shade. It did not go on well. But the paint, oh, my gosh, it went on so well. And I think I painted this guy with it, too. I believe. No, I didn't. I, no, this no, this was actually painted. This is, I painted this one last week. The week before last week. That's, that's all the testers right there. So that's, that's a, kind of a different finish, isn't it? Yeah. So, well, it's got a wash on it, so it gives it a little bit more of a sheen. So, but yeah, so, but yeah, the, uh, they're really cool paints, man. Uh, they, uh, as I said before, they do cost a little bit more, but, um, they last a lot longer. You don't have to shake them up. Um, so they're really nice and they can shoot right out of the airbrush without any, uh, mixing. So. So what we're doing now is we're applying a flesh wash to our ogre to darken him down. And then let me move some of this medium here. And show up some of our details. Little off camera there, dude. I got back on camera. Sorry. I noticed okay. I'm off no. camera. Oh, there you are. Yeah, I see it. Yeah. I haven't tried the Mo Monument Hobbies or Scale 75. It's just that it's just those, I, I usually try to stick to what I can get locally, um, unless I, I really need something. Again, like the the Reaper paints, like, uh, I'd love to try more Reaper out, but, you know, they're really hard to get. I've got two of their basic sets, and the, some of their liners, and a couple colors that I had to order for commissions, but, you know, that, that's about it for the Reapers for me. But I've always wanted to try the Monument ones, but I'm just not... I've got so much paint now, I can't really justify buying any more paint. You just haven't thought about it long enough yet. You'll come up with a good reason. Yeah, nah. I got to spend money elsewhere. I'm trying to get all the second edition stuff for Fantasy Grounds. I'm about $130 away from having the complete collection, so... I've been spending my spending money. Anytime something goes on sale that I don't have, I've been buying it for the the you know the D and D classic stuff. So, well, Lord knows there's a metric shitload of it. I'm sorry, pardon me, bad language. There's a metric crapload of it. Well, not for fantasy grounds yet. So, 
No, but I mean, you know, they'll be cranking out uh, stuff for Fantasy Grounds from uh, AD and D Second Edition for a couple of years that's easily. The thing though, I mean, I know it's kind of like a little pet project because the OSR got really good, and and a lot of people don't realize that First and Second Edition didn't really have a lot of different rule changes. So First and Second Edition, the only real big differences was the fact that they're trying to get Gary Gygax's name off of everything. Because the way his contract worked is that they sold something with his name on it. He got money from it. And they were trying to screw him over, uh, the lady it took over. So that was the real reason why they came out with second edition. The The rules itself barely changed. They cleared, cleaned up a lot of stuff in the rule set. But everything that's first edition um, and second edition are backwards compatible. The uh, and, that, and what a lot of people don't understand is the same way with Castles and Crusades is that... Um, Castles and Crusades is actually first and second edition um, um, comparable because you can run any first and second edition D&D module in Castles and Crusades. The only thing you have to do is take your uh, monster's AC and subtract it from 20, and that's your actual AC for the, the monster in Castles and Crusades. So it works with it very well. So Mystic is asking a couple of more questions. What's your favorite mini company? And do you paint any big standalone models, not specifically for a game yeah. system? Um, so, crap. Favorite miniature company? Um, I, like, I prefer metal models um, just because they're easier to clean up. I don't enjoy them if I drop them. So that's always an issue. Um I do enjoy Citadel models. I think that when they're put together nicely and cleaned up nicely, they look amazing. Okay, um, the, I, th I think that they've got a lot of good sculptors. I've been painting them since back in the day, and now for little little companies, I prefer Ironwind Metals. They make some. They 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 own all the original Ralph Partha mold, molds, and um, so they distribute the the original models and stuff like that. Um, that Ralph Partha used to produce. I do enjoy Reaper Metal min miniatures uh, compared to their bones. Um, I do think Whiz Kids are coming along pretty nicely. Um, as long as you strip the pre-painted primer on there, because that stuff is horrible to begin with. Um, let's see here. I've been wanting to get into doing bust um you know, or doing like uh, statuettes when I get better at painting. Um, so, um, let's see, what typical, I heard again, is it hard to get in? I always want to try it. No, it's not hard to get point that out. And tabletop Santa. Um, I always tell people paint with what you can afford. Um, like, I've been talking about this paint set tonight. Um, this is a craft paint set, and I've actually been using some of them tonight as well. Um, you can get this if you're in the U.S. up north at Menards. Usually, it's anywhere from $22 to $30, and there's 36 paints in it, and it's a good starting point. Um, the only thing I would add to that is metallics, a couple of metallic paints. Um, so, okay, so you have a Menards up there. So, this is literally what this case looks like. This is all hobby paint. Or craft paint, okay? It's good pigmented paint. Um, if you want to get into it cheap, then I would, if you want to practice on stuff, re uh, Reaper Bones is a great way to practice. Um, if you want to, uh, you know, get, um, let's see here. Um, if you really want to go cheap, is get Plastic Army Men. Um, as far as primer goes, I use cheap Walmart rattle can unless I'm using the airbrush. Um, when I'm using the airbrush, I usually use... Uh, uh, Vallejo primers. I'm going to try to get into some of the Badger primers here shortly. But, um, but yeah, so the, um, but yeah, it's not too bad. Brushes is where I spend my most money on comparably. Uh, but so this brush here, these Element Games brushes, I bought, or I have a set of three of these in three different sizes. And these are Kalinsky Sable brushes. Um, I've had this set and I have been using it as my daily driver now for almost four years maybe uh yeah about four years now um and just from where i've been maintaining it keeping it clean um uh, it still has a pretty decent point on it so oh, object yeah. source lighting uh yeah no <laughs> i've 
I have not got into object source sliding. That is another thing I do want to work on. Um, I do love Zenithal highlighting stuff, but I have not gone into object source sliding yet. So, oh, what is object source lighting? So said like, the... um, so like, object source lighting. Say, uh, let's see here. Um, now this, uh, I don't know where he is. I just piled him up over here. Okay, so say I have a model with a lantern. So the way I would paint that is, um, I would go ahead and do my basic colors on that model and then I would take the areas that would have light from the lantern on it and I would hit it with say the airbrush with a yellow okay okay I understand and so concept. and so like and then from there I would just paint it like it's glowing and stuff so I've not um I've done I, I'm I, wet wet blending is one of the ones I'm really getting into, and I'm that's one of the things I'll, I I want to practice more on. I haven't got into non-metallic metals yet. I've been wanting to try that, but where I do a lot of commission stuff, it it just takes up my time. So, but yeah, now we're going to do a little bit of agrax, and the agrax is going to go on the belt, the skulls, um, and the actually the wolf stuff. And then I'm interested to see what shade of what this agrax is that you've been talking about. This is a about. brown. It's an agrax or shade. It's a brown, brown green. Regardless, I'm still interested in seeing it. Don't you try and divert me, Mister. So. But no, if you if you have the money to get a good hobby set starting out with, um. Uh, I'll, I'll, you'll never go wrong with Army Painter. They've got a good starter set. They got a D and D starter set um, that's fairly good as well. Um, let's see here. I'm trying to think of some other ones. Uh, Citadel. I wouldn't. I wouldn't get Citadel starter sets. Um, starting out because those are actually designed for their models as far as like oh here's these colors to paint ultramarines or whatnot now we'll say um uh out of all the paints out there real turtle which would you prefer for starter starting out i would get army painter or reaper in all honesty if you're just starting out in the hobby so i'd get one of those two And I know they, they got a basic starter set from Army Painter for like $29. And then I would just add a couple more browns, purple, and uh, some more metallics. Or oh, in, a, in, a, in a bone. They don't have a bone in it. So. We got a serious discussion of paint now. I know. Yeah, so I'm actually working that commission I'm doing is with Turbo Dork. This is their absinthe color. Um, these are the salamanders I'm working on right now. Um, and it doesn't look that great after you wash it. Um, that's a problem. Um, it looks great before you wash it, but when you have to put a wash on it, it doesn't look that great. And usually for when I'm doing big armies like that... Um, when I, when I do big uh, armies, I end up shooting my wash through the airbrush. Um, it saves on wash, and it applies it really quickly. So it puts it all over. I'm the type of person is I take it to 11, and I dial it down to like a 10 uh, with washes and stuff. So let's see here. Is now the appropriate time to remind me of what your friend said about how you ruin everything with a wash? Yep. Okay, you're ruining everything with a wash, Daniel. That's fine. You can, <laughs> you can shut up. No, man, you shut up first. Oh, man, so normally I would say something like, your mom will shut up. But I'll tell you this, I've gotten so bad at that, and my daughter has started doing it as well. And, like, um, you know, that's just her thing oh yeah right eh? yeah. it's not safe to say pretty much anything well, with kids around so, 
She said she she did that. Um, yeah, is after you watch go back with the Zenithal point of view. We could double I thought about that. I did go back and hit a couple of them with with that. I did a Zenithal before beforehand um, before I put the turbo door down and and stuff. But I still end up taking two coats of turbo door just to get the cut. The coloration on there, right? No, she actually used that phrase to a teacher whose mom just died. Oh, swell. And it's not like teachers already don't have a sense of humor, right? Yeah, I know. I was like, oh, gosh, kid, you really did that. He's, he's like, yeah. Um. Okay, so I've got some of the Army Painter Wargamer um brushes and i do use this from time to time you'll see me i use this guy right here all the time this is an element games uh kalinsky sable set that i've had for four years that are my daily drivers um i do use citadel washes for my washes i use their shade brushes uh, now as far as dry brushes go i went to walmart and in the the um uh, in the makeup section, they have a brand called Elf. These are $2 a piece. They have different sizes. These are the best dry brushes you will ever get. And they're a lot cheaper than other companies' dry brushes. Contrast paints. Uh, if you can afford them and, and you don't want to get good at the hobby, you could use contrast paints. Um... Nah, I don't have an issue with contrast paint. I just like to give people a hard time about it. So, uh, I'm trying to think about this base. What color I want to paint. Oh, I might paint it with some dirt. I tried the Dollar Tree ones, and they didn't go as well. as They weren't as soft as the elf brushes from Walmart. See, look, this is what happens. You get a bunch of us in here talking about painting. You're counting down your last 10 minutes, son. I know, I know. Give me a minute. No pressure. I'm just I'm just like the bell. I'm the warning bell. I know. I'm just trying to outline his feet. I won't get his base done tonight, but I just want to outline his feet. Uh, and there's a few other spots that I need to hit with metallic. Doesn't everyone want to dodge eyes? <laughs> Um, I do, so, dang it, I'm going to actually teach, I'm going to stop painting for a second. So, um, painting eyes is really simple. Um, let me see here, I'm trying to find a piece of paper. Alright, so, let's see here, um, now i got to find a pen, uh, pen, pen, pen. <laughs> All right, so this is how I paint eyes, okay? So I, I had a, I did a video on this a while back. One of my first videos was painting eyes. So there's your eyeball, right? And this is very tiny. It's just the way it is. So what you do is you take white and just go over the entire area with white like that, okay? When that dries, you take a line of black like that, okay? When you're done with that, you come in here and fill this all in with your flesh tone. Okay, and for a 28 millimeter miniature, that will look great for your eyes. No, I have not found a paint marker small enough to do eyes with. Now, I will tell you, for cheating for highlights, I use watercolor uh, coloring pencils to do all my edge highlights. So, but yeah, I, I, I do not, I do, do not use markers. Um, I've tried that in the past, uh, mainly for painting Eldar to line stuff, and it doesn't work out. Yeah, I just, my hands aren't that great at it, I don't think, and I'd just rather deal with the paint and stuff, so. And a lot of times, um, depending on how detailed the model is, I, I hardly ever paint eyes. Unless, like, unless my focal point is the face. Like with Reaper models, I will not paint eyes. Just the, the main fact. Last, last thing I saw you paint eyes on was that, um, 
that uh, female witch or caster who had the crooked face. Remember that one? Oh, yeah. It's because it's right. stupid Reaper models, man. And, uh, man, the model was like, uh, I'm sure someone dropped the mold someplace because the leering <laughs> lopsided, sideways lopsided face on her was tragic. Yeah, I'm trying to find if I have any models in here. I painted the eyes on lately. Uh, I have a kid in the living room barking. See, I painted her eyes, I think, a long time ago. Uh, no, I didn't. Sorry. I didn't. A long, long time yeah. ago. But no. Let's see here. I hear somebody crying. Oh, it's my 10 year old. Holy so. teeny eyes on that one. My 10 year old is messing with the Boston Terrier. He's 11 now. I keep forgetting that. Uh, I think this has more on my creature caster dragon. Um, sponsorships not for this show. Uh, I was supposed to be getting sponsored by Fat Dragon, provided models and stuff, but they never did. Um, I do have a Patreon account that I do ask if anybody wants to sign up for my Patreon. Um, I, I try my best to, to do what I call hobby hacks from time to time. Uh, but I have three tiers for it. A $3, $5, and $30 tier. The $3 tier gets you access to my Discord channel. $5 gets the Discord channel in any early hobby hacks that I do. And thirty dollars gives you an hour of my time a month for me to teach you how to paint, or um, I paint a model for you uh, that month for thirty dollars. So, um, but no, as far as this show, I do not have a sponsor yet. Um, the I've you know they they've talked about seeing if Reaper would sponsor me. Um, at one point, um, now for my paint classes, I do have a sponsor, and that's Army Painter. Um, I teach the Army Painter method at conventions, and uh, but um, now I am hopefully I do have a company that I've gotten fairly friendly with. And as far as as what I mean by sponsorship is, they don't pay me to to use their products. They just send me their products, and I use their products. And so that company hopefully will uh end up doing that eventually um but i would love to get something from reaper or from um dang uh coat the arms that would be great so no there's a good question from mystic i have never competed in a painting contest and because I do not ever feel that my best stuff is good enough to compete in a painting contest. So that's been one of my Well, you never things. really know until you try, though, right? Yeah, but I'm, so you'll I have guess. to try that sometime. But I don't think I ever will. Sometime soon. Now, I'll run a painting contest. Whether it turns out good or not. I've run painting contests before, so. Well, if you run them, then, I mean, you know, you just can't get away from taking part in one. Yeah. Come on. So, um, let's see here. If, if you were ever to compete in a contest, would you be preferred, uh, what would be your preferred type of competition? I hear speed painting events are the most, uh, level of playing field. Speed painting, I think I could do good in speed painting. Um, uh, you know, I always did want to get a golden demon, but, like, I don't think I would ever be that good. Um. But I always thought about 3D printing a Golden Demon. Um, crystal brushes are completely out of my league. I don't ever think I'd get a crystal brush at all. Um, but Of course, you never know until you try. Hey, I have a child. Hello. What are you doing? I want mommy. You want mommy? Yeah. Okay, well, is mommy in the other room? No. She's not? Where's she at? Where? Huh? Oh, is your neck feeling better? No. Yeah, it is. You're moving around. You weren't moving around this morning. What? What? What's, he, what's that daddy? Hey, he's an ogre. What? What do you have? What do you have there? He's got a club. He's going to hit you over the head with it. Yeah. 
Alright, here. Go, go with your brother. I'll be out in a minute. Alright, love you. It's got to love kids. Uh, but no, uh, uh, the Luca event in Italy. I've never seen that one before. I'll have to go back and look at it. Now, uh, for a while there, I did practice painting very old school with, like, wa no washes at all, using multiple layers of paint and stuff, which I got fairly good at that, and that's why I wanted to get into the more of the wet blending those layers in and stuff, so... I'm trying to put a little bit of metal here on this bracers. Hey man, no no problem. I'm uh that's the thing. I want more people into the hobby. Uh, you know, I also run a a Facebook group for people who paint that are handicapped. Um, that normally we get a lot of flack on places like Reddit, and um and it's all about. I don't care if you're painting models. You're painting models and you know, you're doing what you like to do, and it's fun. This is a very therapeutic hobby for a lot of people, and they don't need to be taking any heat from anybody about how good or how bad their models are. Um, you know, I don't mind giving criticism as far as like, uh, well, you could try this to do a little bit better, but if you think your model is awesome, I think your model is awesome. So, But anyway, that's it for the show tonight. This is what we've got done. Let me see if I got this in view here. Uh, we used a mixture. I, I did not finish the base like I wanted to. I'm going to go back over this model and hit in a lot of the flat places where some, some stuff settled that I didn't want to settle. Um, and then uh, there's a few other places I need to hit some metallic at. But um, yeah, I think he t overall turned out fairly well. Um, there is some places I do have to clean up where the water wash did pull but you got to remember the paints that we use today i did use a couple army painter paints but the primary of the paints that we used were testers craft paints uh there is that theory that these tester craft paints are really nothing but tester hobby paint acrylics and uh, maybe they are they dry like scale 75 they're a little bit of a medium to heavy body uh um paint but they can be they have enough pigment in them to be watered down so um they work great so uh what is my favorite go-to color charred brown tin tiny tin agrax uh he's pretty agrax crazy tonight oh, agrax was just a shade um i, th I think my go-to color is usually a sand or a a tan color because i always usually uh base coat any model with that color if it's got a lot of flesh on it before i actually start painting it so Anyway, guys, have a great night. And again, thank you. It'll be next Tuesday Thanks night. for turning out, folks. Next Tuesday night at this time. Hopefully we'll have some uh, something a little bit more interesting to paint than an ogre that we've been painting here lately. But y'all have a great night, and God bless.